Right now, Washington Mornings on the Mall. At AM 630. 737 on WMAL, where Washington comes to talk. Brian Wilson, Brian Neiman, standing by on the line. Pollster extraordinaire, Scott Rasmussen. He's the uh, president and founder of Rasmussen Reports and author of the book, The People's Money. Scott, how are you? I'm doing great this morning. Hope you guys are as well. We are. And Brian and I are having a continuing discussion uh, and, and a disagreement about where this election stands. And so we, we decided that we would let you settle it. <laughs> Sorry to put you in the middle there. But let me see if I can uh, uh, sort of summarize both of our positions. I'm of the opinion that in this particular election cycle, the voters have sort of settled in on the horse that they like. I think this is a referendum on whether or not you like President Obama or not. If you like President Obama, you're already in his in his court. If you don't, you're, you're lining up behind Mitt Romney, not because you particularly like Mitt Romney, but because he's not President Obama. And that the numbers have so solidified extremely early. I saw one report that said only like 4% of the Americans out there surveyed have not really made up their mind yet. And I seen, that seems to me to be sort of a very small number this early in the game. Look, there can always be a game changer, and I acknowledge that. Something can happen in the debates. Something can happen in the convention. Something can happen on the campaign trail that changes the game. But the way it looks right now, this is shaping up to be an extremely close election. What do you think? Right now, it is shaping up to be a very close election. Uh, pretty much every day when we release our daily tracking poll, Romney is somewhere between 44 and 47 percent, and Obama is in that same range. Uh, every now and then, they'll move slightly above or below it. But it's people have settled in. Uh, I'm not convinced that it's all that unusual. Uh, on the night after uh, John Kerry in 2004 became the Democratic front runner and won in New Hampshire and was going to be their nominee. Uh, he trailed George Bush by three points. Nine months later, he lost by two and a half points. And the month after Obama wrapped up the 2008 nomination, he won by he was ahead by an average of five in the polls. He won by seven. So there aren't there haven't been in recent years major shifts late in the game. Uh, one of the big storylines out these days, people are saying, "Oh my gosh, President Obama is using George Bush's get out the base playbook from 2004." And if that's his thought process, uh, there's something that very important to note. Uh, in 2004, the big issue was the war on terror. Right. And between July and November, uh, public opinion on how the war on terror was handling uh, grew much more positive, about five points more positive. George Bush's jo uh, job approval went up, and that's why he won. For Barack Obama to repeat that, he needs the economy to be better by right. November. Right, yeah. because in 2004 it was, well, you know, who do you trust more to, you know, take on the war on terror? Is it or is it uh, John Kerry or is it George W. Bush? And, and right. Bush convinced people that it was him. I mean, That's right. And I don't, I don't think there's any way that that Barack Obama can convince people that, that he's the best one to, you know, get the economy on the right track. That, that's right. As a matter of fact, you know, uh, our polling and lots of other polls show that people trust Romney more than Obama when it comes to the economy. Uh, there's one big caution flag, though, for, uh, for the Romney campaign on this, which is they don't really think either guy has a clue. Uh, only 32 percent think the economy will get better if Obama wins. Only 36% think hmm. it will get better if well, Romney wins. On that point, let me ask you a question. If there comes anybody who is perceived by the general public as a credible third-party option, and there is this feeling out there that I don't really like Obama, and a lot of people really don't like Romney, and there's this small core in the middle, how does that change the equation? You know, it would have to be somebody who could come up with a convincing rationale that they could win. Um, a majority of Mitt Romney's voters right now uh, say that, you know, they're not all that enthusiastic about him. They think the election is a choice between the lesser of two evils. But they are still motivated to vote for Mitt Romney because it's the only way they see to remove President Obama from office. So uh, my ex our current polling shows typically 5 or 6 percent of voters say they would vote for a third party. I would expect as election day draws closer, that will decline to 2 or 3%, uh, you know, unless there's something 
unforeseen in the next couple of months. But what what better predicts the future or elections when it comes to the questions asked? Is it who are you going to vote for, the horse race, or is it questions like, is the country on the right track? Do you approve of the president's job performance? Who is better to put America on the right track? Which one do you think is a better predictor for, for elections? Until we get into uh, at least mid-September, and maybe even early October, the president's job approval is the best indicator. Okay. And, uh, you know, this president has been in the mid to high 40s consistently. Uh, right now, you know, our numbers show that his job approval is 48 percent. That means he'd be likely to get about 48 percent of the vote. And it means if there's a serious third party, it becomes a, a toss-up election. All right. A lot of it has to do with also getting these polls right is, is predicting who actually will show up at the polls on right. November 6th. Right. Um, who, who do you think is going to show up, or who are you projecting that will actually be at the polls? Will there be more Democrats? Will there be more Republicans, independents, that mix, which is always difficult to, to really define who, who will actually show up? Sure, it's difficult, especially early in the season. Uh, we know historically uh, both parties you know, have, a, have a pretty narrow range. Republicans uh, got 32% or 32% of the vote in 2008, way below their norm. Democrats were 39%, well above it. That gave uh, Obama a seven-point partisan edge. Um, I think we're going to be much closer to even this time around. Uh, perhaps uh, not dead even as it was in 2004, but perhaps a, a Democratic advantage of maybe a point or two, or it could even go the other way if the economy gets worse. Uh, and the reason I say that is when we look at the polling data, one of the most important predictors of election turnout is uh, how interested you are in the campaign. And on every measure of that, Republicans, Republican-leaning constituencies, conservatives, far more interested in the campaign than Democrats and Democratic constituencies. I have seen a story that said, and not aimed at you, but just in general, that many pollsters uh, perhaps are undersampling Republicans and oversampling Democrats, and that the numbers may be slightly skewed because of that. Do you think that's a fair, a fair uh, criticism? Well, I think Jay Cost wrote an article about that in the Weekly Standard just recently, so that may be what you're referring to. Yeah, I think to. so. Um, and what his point was, most of the polls that are out there right now show uh, registered voters. Ours is one of the very few that is already measuring likely voters. Likely voters, voters right. And any poll of registered voters is going to oversample de the number of Democrats that turn out. Um, there's a lot of, and that doesn't mean somebody's wrong to use that sample. It's just that as a consumer of polls, you should be aware of it. If a registered voter poll shows, uh, say, uh, Obama up by two, uh, that probably means Romney would be up one or two points in a poll of likely voters. We're, hmm. we're talking about a difference of three or four points. And the reason there's no mystery to it, uh, younger voters uh, you know, are, are less likely to actually show up and vote than their elders. Right. Are, if it is you know, even when it comes to people who show up at the polls, Democrats, Republicans, yeah. or slightly you know, advantaged to one more or the other, where are independents going? I mean, ha has there been a trend with independents? You know, generally they are leaning uh, against President Obama. Uh, and, you know, our latest numbers show 43 uh, percent for Romney, 33 percent for Obama. Those numbers fluctuate a little bit. Uh, again, I want to be clear, they're not voting for Mitt Romney. They're, right. they're sort of yeah. saying, oh, my gosh, we've got to make a choice here. Uh, and that's, that's a fairly typical response. Barack Obama is playing the role. It is a referendum on him and uh, people are responding to whether they think he can handle the economy. And that's why comments like his, you didn't build that, become such firestorms. 72% uh, of voters do believe that if you start a small business, you're the person who's primarily responsible for the success of that business. 77% uh, believe small business owners work harder than others. Uh, you know, th those comments uh, by the president... Uh, really put him in a difficult position. Right. Scott Rasmussen, president and founder of Rasmussen Reports and author of The People's Money. Always good to have you here Great on WML. Thanks a lot.